story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. Nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Well, Dr. Kildare, how nice to see you in clothes. I beg your pardon, Molly. Oh, now you know what I mean. <laughs> Doctor's tunics may be all very well and good, but a suit of clothes really does something for a man. Mm, glad you approve. What are you doing in Dr. Gillespie's outer office today? His nurse is on relief. You can find more excuses to get at that desk. <laughs> well, I started looking after him 20 years ago, and I can't seem to break myself of the habit. I see. I'm not in here. Oh, aren't you? Known as be you. Well, what are you all dressed up for? Going out. How do I look? I don't like your tie. Oh, what's the matter with it? Knot's too big. A knot is not too big. It's just right. I hate big knots stuck under men's chins. Well, you aren't wearing this. Well, I'm looking at it. You won't be looking at it very long. I'm taking it right out of here. Where are you going? Got a date. With a girl? What else? Well, with you, it's hard to say. Ah. You could have a date with a test tube, somebody's sick cat, or a monkey in the zoo. All right, all right. You don't have to elaborate any further. I have a date with a girl. Yeah. And a very pretty one. Mm. So if you don't mind, I'll be on my way. Who's taking care of things for you? Well, I haven't any emergency cases. One of the other doctors is standing in for me. Who's the girl? A gal from my hometown. Haven't seen her for several years. <laughs> Think you'll know her when you do see her? I remember they used to be the prettiest little nurse in Hackensack. And one day I went back there and when you... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, that's another story. Where, where are you meeting her? At the zoo in Central Park. Why the zoo? Just thought I might get lonely for you. Ah, oh, get out of here. Just what I was going to do, Dr. Gillespie. Good night. <laughs> Hello, Janet. Jimmy. Oh, you look wonderful. Well, so do you. Were you waiting long? No, I just got here. I've been renewing some old acquaintances. Oh? <laughs> same lion is here. I know it's the same one. And I'd swear some of the monkeys are the same. <laughs> How long has it been since... Since we were here? Hmm, several years. I thought so many times about how we used to come here to the zoo when I'd get to New York. Let's see, now, you were about 20, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And I was 17. Life was a very serious thing in those days, wasn't it? <laughs> it certainly was. We <laughs> spelled it in capital letters. Spent every waking moment worrying about what we were going to do with it. Well, you got what you wanted when you were 20. You're certainly a successful doctor. Did you get what you wanted when you were 17? Hardly. At 17, I wanted to marry you. No. Oh. Well, anyway, you're lucky. It isn't much fun being a doctor's wife. I never heard your mother complain. No, she never did, but I know what her life was like. Not just days, but weeks would go by when she'd only see my father as he gulped a cup of coffee on his way out of a case or on his way to bed at some unholy hour. I thought about you a lot of times, Janet. I meant to write, but somehow there just never was enough time. Jimmy, do you think you'll ever find any time for... for real living? Don't you think there ought to be some sort of balance to life? Is medicine alone enough for you? Has been for Dr. Gillespie. Oh, do you want to be like him? No, not really. Not in the sense you mean. I'd like to marry someday and have a home and children. I wonder if you'll ever take the time. Oh, sure I will. Someday. I've got a lot of time yet. So have you, for that matter. <laughs> You're so quiet. What are you thinking about? An old Chinese proverb. No? Oh, what? Enjoy yourself. It is later than you think. It's turned cold suddenly, hasn't it? Come on, let's hop a cab and get some dinner. You 
were always the best dancer I ever knew, Janet. Oh, thank you. We used to dance a lot to this tune. Though there be pain and darkness too, I'll not complain. I'll see it through. The next line. Let's see. Oh, poverty may come to me. That's true. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You never could carry it, too. <laughs> but I should get A for effort, or at least it'd be. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, it's so good to see you again. Oh. You know how I feel tonight. Mm. I feel as though some way we've gone back and you're 17 again and 20. Nothing is real except this moment. Oh, Jimmy, I wish nothing was. I wish nothing was. Well, shall we get back to our table and have our dessert? I'm still hungry. So am I. Well, I'll be darned. Now, isn't that someone sitting at our table? It certainly is. Well, it looks like... No, it couldn't be. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Dr. Kildare. Well, you're certainly the last two people I expected to find here. Do you think you're the only one that can have an evening out? Oh, Janet, I'm sorry. May I present Dr. Gillespie and, and Miss Bird? This is Miss Norman. How do you know? How do you do, Janet? Uh, we do have our own table right over there. We just came over to chat for a moment. <laughs> Why, Molly, how nice to see you in clothes. Oh. <laughs> well, you could hardly expect me to come to a place like this in my uniform. <laughs> You're from Jimmy's hometown, Miss Norman. Yes, I am. The then you knew his father. Oh, I should say I did. He took care of me a few weeks ago when I had the flu. Uh-huh. Hey, look at those kids. Uh-huh. I always wished I could dance like that. Well, who could dance to that music? Oh, we could. Want to try it, Janet? Really? Of course. Sure. Excuse us. You go right ahead. <laughs> we'll cheer you on from the sidelines. Yes. Oh, my, she's a pretty little thing. Yes, she is. There they go. Say, look at them. They really can dance. <laughs> Leonard, don't you ever dance anymore. Only when they play a tango. <laughs> you never even danced a tango with me. Oh, yes. You danced a tango when you were taking out that girl from the folly. Molly, there are certain things much better left in the deep, dark past. Leonard, why didn't you ever marry? Well, I always meant to. But somehow I was always busy. Or you were. What? I was? Did you say I was? Well, you don't think that if I had married, I'd have married anyone else but you, do you? (laughs) I wouldn't have dared. I wish I'd known that a long time ago. Oh, here they come. Sit down, Janet. I'll be all right in a minute. I feel so foolish. Something wrong? She got a dizzy spell on the floor. Mm. Here, drink a little water. That's right. She's as white as a sheet. Oh, I'm beginning to get my sea legs back now. (laughs) I had the flu a while back. Oh, I told you that, didn't I? Anyhow, I... I guess I'm still a little weak from that. Hmm. Gee, it's... It's cold in here, isn't it? You'd better put your coat around you. Do you want to go? I think perhaps I'd better. I hate to break up the evening, though. Well, you've probably been overdoing it a little. Flu is sometimes much harder to get over than you realize. Well, it's been quite some time since I had it, though. Of course, I did lose a lot of weight. I suppose that takes time to get over, too. Hmm. How would you like to spend the night in the hospital? I mean... You could have a room there. Oh, my goodness, no, no. (laughs) There's nothing wrong with me that a good night's rest won't fix. I've... I've felt like this two or three times before when I overdid. I'll be all right in the morning. Good night, Miss Norman. So nice to have met you, dear. Yeah, I'm glad to have met you, too. I hope you feel better tomorrow. Thank you. Sure I will. Good night. You just take one of these silly little pills and go right to sleep, hmm? Mm-hmm. I will. Still wish you'd let me take you over to the hospital for an examination. No, I'll come over in the morning. You'll see. I, I won't even need one. Oh, all right, Miss Stubborn. Good night, Jimmy. Uh, Janet. Yes, Jimmy? Tell me. Did you ever outgrow that dream you had when you were 17? No. I never did, Jimmy. I don't think I ever will. Well, you know, maybe I've been selfish, concentrating on my own dream so exclusively. Maybe we should both concentrate on yours for a while and see if see if something can't be done about it. Oh, Jimmy. Good 
morning, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, you beautiful, ravishing creature, you. Sir, someone should take your temperature. Morning, Kildare. Good morning, you divine, wonderful being, you. Kildare, you're crazy. Oh, sorry, Dr. Gillespie. I think you ought to have your head examined. Uh, head? Then you're a very poor diagnostician. Oh, I am, am I? Sorry, can't stop any longer. She's waiting in my office. Ah, you're out of your mind. You're so right. Hello, Janet. Hello, Jimmy. How do you feel? Oh, better, I think. Still a little groggy, though. Uh, just sit down. Now, we'll take your temperature. Oh, I'm sure I don't have one. Well, now, there's only one way to find out. Here, under your tongue. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, I didn't get much sleep last night. Now, why? Kept dreaming of you. Now, what do you think you were saying to me? What? It's later than you think. Over and over, all night, it's later than you think. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And then I'd wake up, and I'd think of the strangest things. That, uh, that blue formal you had for the senior prom. Do you remember it? Mm-hmm. And then the day I left for medical school, there was an early snowfall, and you had on a bright red cap. And when I kissed you goodbye, you were crying. I kept thinking of things like that all night. Things that happened years ago. Oh, Jimmy. Here, let me see the thermometer now. Oh, Jimmy. Come in. Oh, good morning, Miss Norman. Hello, Dr. Gillespie. Well, how is the patient, Kildare? Janet, I'm afraid I'm going to have to order you to bed. Why? Well, your temperature's up a little. Oh. Well, well, there's nothing to worry about. Lots of things can cause the flu to flare up again. That's right. A few days in bed and you'll be as good as new. Well, I, I certainly had no idea I was coming here to make a professional call, Jimmy. Janet, you know, you used to say you thought I'd make a fine doctor. Well, now you'll have a chance to see me in action. You'll have a chance to see if I'm as good as you thought I'd be. Jimmy, I'd put my life in your hands. Professionally. Or otherwise. Jimmy, it's almost two o'clock in the morning. You've got a hard day tomorrow. I know. I was just standing here by the window thinking, or maybe I was praying, I don't know. These past two days since Janet entered the hospital, I... You won't help her any by losing your sleep. You examined her. Didn't you find anything different? Rapid pulse, heart murmur, temperature 103. Did you see the reports of the blood test? A high leukocytosis, 25,000 in the blood culture. The presence of short gram-negative rods, remnants of flu bacillus that have come detached from the growths on the valves of the heart and are carried by... The first time in my life I wish a report of yours didn't conform with a report of mine. I wish I were wrong. Jimmy, we've had cases of subacute endocarditis before. It isn't necessarily fatal. We know what to do. Complete rest, penicillin... Medical science has made great progress in this kind of case. Not many people realize what dangerous after effects the flu can have. Well, there are rare exceptions, Jimmy. Now, why does she have to be an exception? What is this girl to you, Jimmy? There might be a lot of things, Dr. Gillespie. She might be a lot of things. <laughs> We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. How do you feel, darling? Better. 
I'm very, very tired. Mm, with your temperatures down. Well, that's an improvement, isn't it? It certainly is. Now, we've got to keep it there. You look tired. Me? Oh, I am a little. A lot of troublesome cases? Yes, I... A lot of troublesome cases. Janet. Janet, when you get over this, I'd like to have a long talk about... About everything. And then if you still want to. If you still think you could be happy as a doctor's wife. Jimmy. Is this... Am I to consider this a proposal? Grade A. Gilt-edged with a blue ribbon around it. Oh, Jimmy, if I get well, there's nothing that would make me happy. You know that. I didn't say if, Janet. I said when. I know. I'm the one that said if. Why? I don't know. Perhaps because of an old Chinese proverb. Well, Dr. Gillespie? I examined it just you asked me to. Yes. The pains in her abdomen are caused by an enlarged spleen. And the uh, that group of red spots below her collarbone? The DKI. You're sure that's what they are? They don't disappear on pressure. They're the right size and the... Well, I'm sorry, Jimmy, I'm sure they are. I think perhaps you'd better notify her parents if you haven't already. Parents are dead. She has a young brother. I didn't want to alarm him, but... Like called, he'll be here today. I'm going back to Janet's room. Molly's on duty. She's taking the case over. Bless her. I think I'll go back with you myself. Temperature's high again. Heartbeat palpitating. Jimmy. Yes, darling. It was later, wasn't it? Oh. Later than we thought. No, now, don't say that. Don't even think I know, it. Jimmy, I know. But it's late. It's very late. Uh, I'm going to get the digitalis, Jimmy. Yes. Yes, I don't want to leave her. You stay right here. I'll get it. How is she? She's failing. Developed into a pancarditis. I want the digitalis. I have it right here. Will it help? Well, I hope so. The muscle wall of the heart and the endocarium are both diseased, and the heart valves and muscles have become infected. If the digitalis doesn't work, she only's got a short time. Oh, it's failing. There's one more thing we can do. Inject adrenaline directly into the heart to stimulate it. I have the injection ready, Doctor. Good. Doctor Gildare. No. no, will you, Doctor? Yes, of course. We tried everything we knew. There was nothing that medical science could do to save your sister's life. Well, she was all right when she came to New York. She didn't have any sign of heart trouble. How could it happen so fast? It was the results of the influenza. Well, then why wasn't that known before? Well, sometimes it takes quite a while for such symptoms to manifest themselves. By the time she collapsed, it was already too late. She was... Well, she was all I had. Yeah, I know, son. Do you know what I'm going to do? No. I'm going to study medicine. I'm going to specialize in heart disease, and well, maybe someday I can find a way to help someone with the same trouble. Son, I think that's a fine idea. And I'd like to do everything I can to help you. How about having dinner with me tonight, and we'll talk it over? Thanks, Dr. Gillespie. I'd like to. It's dark already. I didn't realize it was so late... Ah, uh, this has been a very sad day for all of us. You wait here for me. Uh, someone I got to talk to. Jimmy? Yes? What is it? Am 
mind if I turn the light on? It's pitch black in here. No, I don't mind. How about some dinner? Janet's brothers are in here. No, and the... I couldn't eat. Oh, now, look, you're too good a doctor to take an attitude like that. Am I? I wasn't so good a doctor today, was I? Oh, now, Jimmy. Now, neither were you. In fact, the entire field of medicine didn't make such a good showing today, did it? We can't win every battle, Jimmy. We can try, but we can't always win. Dr. Gillespie, I don't think I want to be a doctor anymore. What? Well, what would you be? I don't know. Carpenter, laborer, maybe. I don't know. What good is it anyway? All the years of study, the work, the devotion that's demanded of you... And if you can't save a life that really matters when the cards are down. Jimmy, it isn't one life that matters to a doctor. It's all lives. You've lost a case and you'll lose others. But, but when the results are added up, you'll save a good many more than you'll lose. Do you think you're the first man that ever had to withstand loss and grief? A girl you know is dead. And the world died with her. But you're still living. And so is your oath. And so are the people you swore to help in that oath. Janet's brother's waiting in my office. He wants to take up medicine. <laughs> Think of that now. He wants to study heart disease and maybe someday help someone who has the same illness his sister had. Well, I'm going to take him to supper. Good night. Uh, talk to Gillespie. May I? May I join you? Ah. Uh, Sorry. You're quite right. I was... I don't know. Ah, Jimmy, what happened yesterday's already in the past. And from the pain and grief of yesterday comes the hope of tomorrow. Because the field of medicine's growing and expanding. Nothing can change what was written yesterday, Jimmy. But with study and work and faith, there's still hope of changing what might be written tomorrow. Shall we be on our way, Dr. Kildare? Yes, Dr. Gillespie. Let's be on our way. Toward tomorrow. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Good night, Bob. Good luck. Good night, Bob. Oh, come over tomorrow. Let us show you around the hospital. Thanks, I will. Good night. Augie's a night. Yeah. Well, there's the hospital. We're almost home. Looks like a... Like a castle shining in the mist, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. A castle illuminated by hope. Rising out of the darkness. Sorry I blew up tonight. Huh? Everything got too much for me for a few minutes. But medicine is my life. I wouldn't give it up for anything. I know that. Doctor killed there. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Lorene Tuttle, Eleanor Audley, and Skip Holmeyer. Dick Joy speaking. <laughs>